Welcome back everyone. Have a really cool video in store for you here. Decided to go to Harbor Freight, which for those of you not in the US, it's a discount tool store with mostly Chinese goods. Tried to went to Harbor Freight to go and see if we could buy a polisher, pads, microfiber towels, everything from them for less than $200. And then we're going to go do a two-step paint correction to some terrible paint and see how good it will come out. So I was looking along their shelves here for a six inch either wool or microfiber pad and they didn't have them. So they have a system that's very similar to the Rupes, um, blue, green, yellow, white, which is coarse, medium, fine, and extra fine. So I decided to buy their coarse and their fine, which is their blue and their yellow. One of the really cool things I was surprised about is they sell Meguiar's products. They don't sell their own polishes. So more on that in just a minute. Came across this polisher, it's called Bauer. Nowhere on it does it say made in China or anything like that. Uh, it does say it on the box. This particular store was out of them. So I went to a second one to pick this up, but I did get everything else at this store otherwise. So it feels uh, quite heavy compared to the professional polishers. You know, I've, I've used the Rupes and the Flex polishers, so I'm very familiar with those. Use those almost every day. They have polishers as cheap as $21, $22. We're not going to use that here, but just showing you that. So that's what we ended up getting right there. $109 compared to Rupes LHR15ES, which is their 15 millimeter. My daughter's with me helping us get the blue and the yellow here. Thank you, CC. And we're gonna get M105, which is the coarse compound, and M205, which is the finishing compound. You can see they're more than $30 a piece. There we go. So also gonna use their microfiber towels, $9 for a 12 pack, which for microfibers compared to the other ones I get, those are kind of spendy. Um, so anyway, I went to the other store. They had one in stock. They also had Meguiar's detailing clay, which I didn't pick up at the other one because I did have some at home. Um, 31, $32 is pretty expensive for clay. It is seven ounces, but we'll go ahead and th throw it in there. Also got my free light, my free LED light. So we're going to use that as part of the correction just to show you that you can do it with things like that. I would suggest having other lighting, but that's what we're going to do. One thing that truly surprised me was on the back of these pads, it says product of Germany assembled in China. You know who else makes pads in Germany? Flex. And it's most likely a flex pad with a Chinese adhesive and Velcro. The Meguiar's is made in Japan for their clay. And the compound and polish are both made in the USA. Again, pretty rare to see that at Harbor Freight, which is a store that carries primarily Chinese items. And on the back of the pads, it says it works with Rupes, Flex, Black & Decker, DeWalt, and other polishers as well. So we'll get into opening the box here of the Bauer 20 millimeter polisher. Comes with a pad that we're not gonna use. I'm just probably gonna throw that one away. Looks like a finishing pad. So again, it says nowhere on the actual polisher where it's made. It says Harbor Freight, Calabasas, California, but it does not say made in USA or anything like that. It is made in China. It's where it says it on the box. All right, so now we're gonna get into the actual correction. We're gonna wash everything first. This is a Ford F-150 pickup truck. It's a V6 manual transmission, two wheel drive work truck. It's a vinyl floor, you know, crank windows. It, uh, it has some pretty oxidized paint, has some yellowed headlights. We'll do more on that later. Lots of brake dust, said deep scratches, pretty much anything and everything that you could think of. 
the uh, previous owner, he had used silicone in and around the door handles and the the front fender badges. Like he removed them and tried to reattach them and put silicone underneath them. So you'll see in the in the future of the video here, there may be something underneath those door handles. I'm not going to really do anything about that right now. As you can see, the roof it's it's almost a matte color. It's got sap stains on it. I mean, it's it's rough. So we're going to get into washing and this is my typical wash. I'm going to put a link to the in the description below as to the products that I'm using here. But basically, I go through, put my wheel cleaner on, clean those first. I'll hose the hose the car off first, foam it down, rinse it, foam it again, wash it with our Australian sheep's wool mitt, rinse it again. And there we go. And actually, I'm just letting it air dry because it's so warm outside and we're going to polish it anyway. After getting it inside, I'm going to first clay bar everything. Harbor Freight does not sell clay bar lube, which is basically a detailing spray. So I'm going to use what we have in our shop, which is Shine Supply Throttle and the clay that we purchased at Harbor Freight. So if you've never used a clay bar before, you basically spray it on, spray the, there you go, spray the panel with the clay bar lube and you wipe it across back and forth until you feel, until you feel nearly no resistance. And so it's pulling up the Imp not the imperfections, but the impurities in the paint that are embedded within the paint and on top of it. You don't want to use too much because it'll then float across the surface and it won't actually grab everything. But you also don't want too little because then the clay will kind of grab onto the paint. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward. You can see how, you know, this was, this was a washed car, properly washed car, and all of this stuff is coming off the paint. So we're going to fast forward this should take about 10 to 15 minutes to do. wanted to quickly address the compare to Rupes polisher. We have one here in our shop here. This is an LHR 15, but it has a modified backing plate. That's really the only difference. Uh, the 15 has a five inch backing plate where the 21 has a six inch backing plate. So really when you think about it, this is, this product is more of a comparison to the LHR 21, which has a 21 millimeter orbit and this Bauer machine has a 20 millimeter orbit. So the, the two things that I have to say about the Bauer are that the lock on the trigger, it doesn't like to stay. And more importantly, the Bauer is not very well balanced at all. Like the Rupes, you can run it all day and it's not gonna bother your hands. It's a very well balanced tool. And you know you pay for that. It's a uh, you know three or four times more than what the what the Bauer costs, but it's designed to run all day, every day, and it'll last several years. The Bauer we don't know about yet because it's new. It's also very cheap, so we'll see how it goes. But you, one thing that you'll hear me complain about this this polisher is the how it is not well balanced. It will shake in your hands. There is a a medical condition that can develop from that if you're going to use this every day. So that is something to keep in mind. If you're just the weekend warrior, this polisher will probably work great for you. But if you're going to use this professionally, I would suggest the Rupes or the Flex over the Bauer. I have a Rupes polisher that's eight years old that's been run nearly every day and it's on like its sixth set of brushes and it still works fantastic. One thing that I would suggest getting is a pad brush. Harbor Freight does not sell them, but they sell brushes, so you could use that. Or, more importantly, compressed air, which you're going to need to blow the pad out. 
especially in this instance since we're only using one pad for the entire vehicle per stage so that uh, you don't even need a fancy tornado air like we have there you just just any kind of compressed air that's all you need as I said earlier we're gonna use the coarse foam and the fine foam polishing pads from Bauer which is Harbor Freight's brand of course these are six inch pads which means that the actual surface of the pad is seven inches M105, M205 that's all we're going to use for this they've been around a long time they do a great job that's why I'm really surprised to see those at Harbor Freight but I am also glad to see those because I know what they're going to do the pads feel identical to the Rupes uh, type of pad it's, uh, it's almost comical how similar that they feel so free spinning, no washer mod or anything like that needed on this. We're going to use 105 with the blue pad. So let's get to it. I'll just leave you with some music.
So I know it, it does become an issue on some other polishers, so I brought out my FLIR 130 to show you after about an hour of polishing, this is the temperatures that you get on the surface. Uh, some areas 120, 130 degrees, so that's uh, 50 degrees Celsius, somewhere in that area. You know, not going to burn you, but unpleasant. Um, the closer you get to the head of the polisher, the hotter. And then of course right around the exhaust of the motor there, you can see that it's quite hot. and it just sits there and heat soaks as you're not using it but if you're going to run it on a low speed I would expect that it's going to get even hotter I think I'm running this on a speed 4 or 5 and I said it earlier this thing is really hard on your hands the vibration it is not balanced uh, if you're just a weekend warrior you'll be alright but take breaks in between doing this uh, this was again for like an hour hour and a half in a row and that normally would wouldn't bother me whatsoever using other polishers but man it it really did a number on my hands um, when I got all the compounding done I came inside and like for another hour or an hour and a half my my fingers just felt like they were tingling not good you can have a medical condition that develops from that if you continue that as I said earlier
So since Harbor Freight doesn't sell any type of a hybrid ceramic spray or anything like that, uh, we're gonna stick with the Meguiar's theme since they, they sell M205, M105, Meguiar's clay bar. So we're gonna apply Meguiar's hybrid ceramic wax. It's purchased out of my own pocket, but I did not see it available at Harbor Freight. So this, I picked it up at Walmart and it's actually being used in my other tests if you check out the other videos on my channel. So here we go. You can see how dusty M1, M105 is. You can kind of see where the truck was. So now it's time to clean up. Final thoughts. So what do you guys think? Do you think this was worth it? $200, $110 for the polisher, nine for the microfiber towels, 30 for the clay bar, and I believe we were in at about 50 for the compound and 10 for each of the pads. So right around $200 for all of that. I think it did a great job, mostly in part to the compounds and the pads. The polisher, it was, as I've said, it was very hard on the hands, but it does a good job. So, you know, for the price point, you really can't beat it but it's definitely not geared towards a professional. If you're a weekend warrior, this would probably do the trick for you. The one thing I may want to get is a microfiber pad or a wool pad to go with this to just have a little bit more cut. Those, uh, those coarse blue foam pads, they just don't quite have enough cut if you have really hazy, really heavily oxidized paint like this truck had. So, you know, we could have had an even better product had we used a microfiber, but I wanted to stick strictly with Harbor Freight products. So that's uh, that wraps this video up, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Please hit the subscribe button. It helps me out tremendously. Like this video and, of course, comment below. Thank you again. 
any of the products used are in the link in the description. We'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.